general mobile radio service. Is it the best radio service for disaster communication, prepper, survival groups? I think it is. It's the perfect combination of flexibility, capability, and ease of use. Okay, so why do I think GMRS is the best radio for preppers? Um, it has the ability to use repeaters, which the more simple, the simpler radio service, the family radio service does not have the ability to speak with repeaters to boost the signal. Ham radio, which is probably the most capable radio, is much more complex, it's much more complicated. Uh, to use the, the ionosphere, the higher frequencies, you have to get a technician's license, then you have to get a general license. So if you have a whole group of preppers that are using those radios, they all have to have the ability to use them. And you don't necessarily, okay, so you don't necessarily have to have a license in a life-threatening emergency situation, but that's not really the issue. The issue is more a technical, technical skill and the skill that you skill set that you have. I still think ham radios are an important part of uh, your your emergency or your damage control comms, but I think they're a, a quiver in your bag. I think that GMRS is going to be much better, uh, much more capable in relation to the people in your group because you may be you may be licensed to have your general license uh, for the ham radio. But anybody else in your group, anybody that comes in that's new from your group, they don't, they're not, more than likely, they're not going to have the skill set to deal with tones and frequencies beyond what you have to do on a GMRS radio. For GM, GMRS radio, it's, it's pretty straightforward as long as the radio has the capabilities. So GMRS can use the repeater towers that boost your signal so that your signal goes further out and gmrs also have has five watts of power uh, which is better than the frs radios you can go up to 50 watts on gmrs uh, frs radios uh, are most handhelds are like half half a watt to two watts so you don't have quite as much power the plus side of that is it does it's not going to run your battery down as quick Okay, so what is a GMRS repeater? A GMRS repeater is a transceiver and a receiver that's placed in a location uh, like high elevation, the top of a hill, the top of a mountain, the top of a tower, the top of a building. Because the GMRS radios are still line of sight, uh, you do have to have a somewhat you know, direct line with the tower in order to use it. You also wanna make sure that you have GMRS uh, towers in your area and another option is you can also build uh, your own repeaters and that's something that I haven't done but I would like to look into at some point so the repeaters basically boost your signal so instead of getting you know a half a mile to five miles to ten miles if you have direct line of sight you can boost that up to 70 plus just depending on where the towers are in relation to each other Okay, so something else that you want to pay attention to if you're going to go buy GMRS radios, again, is you want to make sure that they have the ability to do a two-tone, two tones, I, or duplex. I think duplex is the same thing, but I can't find it. I was reading about it. I'm studying for my ham technician license right now. I think duplex is the same thing, but I'm not sure. I know two-tone is actually like what you see on the box of a GMRS radio and that, that allows you to, to, uh, to communicate uh, with the repeater. Okay, so if you have a single tone radio, you can, you can listen to the repeater, you just can't uh, transmit on your radio. Okay, so GMRS radios are also good because there's kind of a, there's a low barrier to, to entry. And what I mean by that is, um, if you go with a ham radio, you have to be licensed, but you also have to take written tests and you have to pass them. To maximize what a ham radio offers, basically the, the high frequencies, instead of the straight line communication, you're bouncing your signal off the ionosphere. In order to do that, you have to have the, the general license to use those frequencies. 
With GMRS, you do have to be licensed. I just got my license. Uh, it took me 12 hours, and I'll have a link down below on how to go uh, to, to do that, how to go through it, because the FCC website is a dumpster fire. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into it. There's directions in the, the article in the link below, and I took some screenshots. And it's constantly changing. There's broken links. You have to go to, like, four different parts of the website. You have to go get your FRN. And then there's some other things that are, you know, kind of particular to it, but it's not, it's not impossible to do, but it is, it is kind of nerve wracking when you first do it. Okay. So another plus of the GMRS radios is they are uh, up to 50 Watts. <clears throat> you can get handheld HTs, handy talkies, walkie talkies. You can also get mobile units that you can put in like a Jeep or a truck. Um, and so the maximum is 50 Watts. Let me look at my notes here. Uh, yeah, so FRS, the family radio service, those are the simple walkie-talkies that you can get uh, at Walmart. Those are uh, limited to 5 watts, and most of, uh, most of the channels, or some of the channels are half a watt, and some of the channels are 2 watts. And MERS, which I don't know much about, you can look into it. Uh, I'll do a video on it at some point, uh, is limited to, to uh, 2 watts. Okay, so another plus of the, the GMRS radio <clears throat> is they have a removable t antenna. But if you're me, you buy one of these Midland radios. It's a nice radio. I, I, it's it's going to be okay for backup for emergencies. You can still use it to, you know, go back and forth between vehicles and stuff, just like you can with an FRS radio. <clears throat> this radio can also communicate with an FRS radio. The issue with this radio, not only can I not, is it not du dual tone, so I can't talk to uh, GMRS repeaters, but I cannot remove the antenna. The antenna is really important with the quality and the strength of your signal. Uh, so I'm basically going to be stuck with this, uh, with this antenna on this radio. So when you're getting a GMRS radio, you want to make sure that you get one that has the dual tone capability and one that you can um, remove the antenna. Okay, so another plus of the GMRS radio, uh, it has over seven overlap, the first seven, one through seven are overlapping channels with the FRS radios or the family radio service. So as long as they're on the same channel and you turn off the uh, privacy tones on the FRS radio, then they'll be able to communicate. If one radio has the privacy tone on and one does not, they won't be able to communicate. Okay, so a downside of GMRS is you have to pay for a license. It's pay to play like a fishing license is, but it's pretty inexpensive considering what you get. It's, uh, it's dropped from $70, now it's $35. The license is good for 10 years. And anyone in your immediate uh, family follows under the umbrella of that license and can use their GMRS radios in relation to that license. So you don't have to get a license for everybody in your family. Okay, so you wanna buy a GMRS radio. I don't want you to make the same mistake I did by getting the, the Midland radios that don't have that uh, repeater capability and I can't and you can't remove the antenna uh, I got some of this information from uh, not a Rubicon productions not a Rubicon productions on YouTube he's pretty sharp he's got a good channel and he basically uh, did a list of what you want to look for when you buy uh, a GMRS radio and boy do I wish um, do I wish I had looked at this list before I uh, bought my radio? Okay, so the first thing is, <clears throat> is it a GMRS radio? You're going to find out pretty quickly that um, there's, a, I don't want to say disinformation, but there's a lot of exclusion of information on the packaging when it comes to any of these radios. Uh, GMRS, FRS, uh, ham radios. You do have some three frequency radios out there. Some of them are certified by the FCC to be used for certain frequencies. Some of the radios have the ability to use the frequencies, but they're not certified. 
uh, by the FCC. <clears throat> so you got to be careful with that. Just make sure that you're getting a, a radio that's certified and that it has the abilities that, that you're looking for. So <clears throat> first thing is, is it a GM, GMRS radio? If it doesn't say GMRS radio on the box, it's not a GMRS radio. Okay, so you also, you want to look at, uh, especially, well, if we're looking at a handy talkie. I don't have a mobile unit yet, but a handy talkie, a walkie talkie unit. You're going to want to look at the wattage of the unit, the power. Just keep in mind that the more power that a unit has, and most of the GMRS units are, are 5 watts, the HTs, the handy talkies. The more wattage you have, the more power it's going to use, so... Yeah, you're going to boost your signal, but you're also going to eat up your battery faster, <clears throat> which is definitely a consideration in an SHTF situation. Okay, so uh, batteries, the more milliwatt hours a battery has, the longer it will last. Normally, that's going to be in direct relation to the size of the battery. Not always, but usually. So a bigger radio is going to tend to be have a bigger battery with a longer charge. Okay, range or, or distance, I think it's called FARS, how far the radio will communicate. With GMRS is a similar, well, it is just like FRS in this case. It's a line of sight radio, meaning the signal goes straight out. If it hits something, the signal stops or is somehow corrupted. So with a, a GMRS radio not using repeater with a line of sight, nothing between you and the person you're communicating with, you're going to get one to, to up to 15 miles and that's going to vary when you see how far the radio will communicate on a box that that's in like laboratory conditions perfect conditions so don't expect to get what is advertised on the box okay another thing you want to consider with your radio is the screen size and do you want color my eyes are old and they suck i can't see i need glasses so it's helpful to have a bigger screen uh the bigger screens on the GMRS radios are going to have more information. Maybe you want that. Maybe you don't want that. I mean, it can be somewhat confusing if you don't want a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, the color windows are harder to see in bright sunlight. So that's also another consideration. Okay, dual monitoring. That's where you can, you can monitor more than one channel at a time. So you could be monitoring the channel that your survival group's on or your security group or whoever you're dealing with in a survival or disaster situation. And then on the other channel, you could also be monitoring, say, an NOAA weather channel just to get updated on what's going on with that. Okay. Uh, and the, the other thing that you want to consider is um, it's an IP rating. It's called an ingress protection rating on the box. And it basically determines how dust proof or, or waterproof or water resistant a radio is. So if there's nothing on the box that says what its IP rating is, then it's not dust and it's not water resistant. Uh, a 66 means that the radio is uh, dust and moisture proof and a rating of 67 means that the radio can actually be submerged okay so, so the next thing to keep an eye on is no matter what the box says there are only 30 channels on a GMRS radio that you can transmit on period anything else is like a sub channel again 30 channels there's only 30 channels so if a box says there's 150 channels on there there's only 30 you can transmit on. I, I think I already said something about this, but no matter whether a radio has privacy codes or privacy tones or any of that stuff, GMSR, GMRS radio is never private. It's not encrypted, so it's not private. So I did some research and not a Rubicon production suggested the Baofeng UV9G, it's 40 bucks. Uh, it's pretty inexpensive. This is not a review. I ordered the radio on Amazon. I don't have it yet. But this will kind of give you a point of reference if you want that two-tone radio that has the ability to um, to, to communicate with the GMRS uh, towers. It has that capability. 
It has 11 channel NOAA scanner. It's P67, which means it's waterproof. You can actually submerge it. You can actually put it in water uh, and it will still work. Uh, it's FCC part 95E compliant. It's five Watts, uh, 22 GMRS channels, eight repeater channels, extra channels for saving repeaters. So you can actually have different repeaters with different tones saved on there. That's in addition to the transmitting channels. Um, has a removable antenna and it's uh, pre-tuned for GMRS. So that's the Baofeng UV9G. I'm not giving you a review, but the reviews online, the reviews on Amazon, uh, not a Rubicon Productions reviews, they're all stellar. Uh, but again, I'll do um, I'll do a review. I'll have a link to this radio so you can go take a look at it, look at the capabilities. This is Scott with Ready Squirrel, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Keep on prepping.